and welcome to this bite-sized technical video on Cap Drawdown. Cap Drawdown was introduced on 6th of April 2011 and was a way of taking income from a defined contribution pension such as a SIP. It's no longer possible to start Cap Drawdown, however if Cap Drawdown began on or before 5th of April 2015 then it can continue to be taken. It's similar to Flexi Access Drawdown in that funds designated to Cap Drawdown remain invested and only need to be sold in order to provide liquidity to pay the required income. As the name suggests, there's a limit on the amount of income that can be taken under Cap Drawdown, which is in contrast to Flexi Access Drawdown. The maximum amount of Cap Drawdown would have been calculated when the member first designated funds to Drawdown then every three years up until age 75, and annually thereafter. There are also certain events that can trigger a review of maximum income under cap drawdown. These include where part of the fund is used to purchase an annuity, if the member gets divorced and a pension sharing order is applied to their pension, or if they designate additional funds to an existing drawdown fund. The maximum amount has changed over the years since Cap Drawdown was introduced, but since 27th of March 2014 it has been set at 150% of the basis amount. Broadly speaking, this is 150% of an equivalent annuity that could be purchased with a member's pension fund. The Government Actuaries Department, or GAD, issued tables which set out how much equivalent annuity a £1,000 of the drawdown fund would buy at any given age based on the prevailing 15-year UK gilt yield. Scheme administrators use this information to calculate the maximum income that can be taken each year under cap drawdown. Prior to 21st of December 2012, different rates were used for men and women, but following an EU gender directive, the rates are now the same regardless of gender. There is no requirement to take any income under cap drawdown, but if income is taken, it can be paid monthly, quarterly or annually, or on an ad hoc basis, as long as the maximum isn't exceeded in a single pension year. All income taken is subject to income tax. As long as someone started cap drawdown on or before 5th of April 2015, then they can add to their existing cap drawdown fund. However, they cannot start a new arrangement if they don't already have cap drawdown. In practice, most people who had cap drawdown have now converted to flexi access drawdown. This removes the need for any reviews and can often result in lower fees. However, the one advantage of taking income under cap drawdown is that it doesn't trigger the Money Purchase Annual Allowance, or MPAA, so it doesn't restrict the amount of tax relief savings that can be made into pensions. This is in contrast to Flexi Access Drawdown, where taking the first income payment will trigger the MPAA.